hope and change were the signature slogans of the 2008 Obama campaign, and the inspirational candidate was adamant about ending the old Washington ways. We will not take a dime from Washington lobbyists or special interest PACs. We're going to change how Washington works. They will not fund my party. They will not run our White House, and they will not drown out the voice of the American people when I'm president of the United States of America. After hearing that, this headline in today's New York Times sure seems at odds with that promise to put Washington on the side of the little guy, not the lobbyists. And truth be told, the story of the Obama White House and lobbyists is a tale of trickle-down disappointment. In June 2010, the New York Times chronicled between Obama administration officials and lobbyists at a coffee shop a few steps from the White House complex. Health care reform, energy policy, and stimulus spending among the many topics. And no official record of who met with whom because meeting at the coffee shop gets around the president's promise to list each and every lobbyist who visits the White House. Then early this year, a new twist. The White House conceded and defended meetings with lobbyists at Jackson Place. That's a government-owned townhouse just across the street from the White House. Again, outside the official complex. So again, like the coffee shop, outside the requirement to keep lobbyist by lobbyist visitor logs. The new fundraising revelations, well, unfortunately, they follow this same pattern. The president's promise was to not accept contributions from lobbyists. And that's why I don't take money from these folks, because my attitude is they will not fund my campaigns. But today's New York Times account details at least 15 examples of Obama bundlers, supporters who promise to raise giant amounts for the campaign, who are involved in or who oversee major lobbying efforts, but who are not themselves registered, as co registered with Congress as lobbyists. Now, these bundlers with clear lobbying ties, if not the official label, have raised at least $5 million for the president's 2012 campaign so far. Let's be clear. There is nothing illegal or unethical about meeting a lobbyist whether it is inside the White House gates or a shot, short walk outside the security perimeter. And there is nothing to suggest any of the 15 bundlers with ties to lobbying have done anything that runs afoul of campaign finance laws. Nothing. The White House, though, gets a bit indignant when it is suggested things might not be exactly as the president promised. What's interesting is that you're citing that story and not the story that demonstrated that lobbyists are lining up to, in record numbers to contribute to Republican campaigns, campaigns that openly and willingly accept money from yeah. lobbyists. Yes, they do. And yes, we have an obligation in the days and weeks ahead to hold the Republicans accountable, too. But saying the other guys are worse, even if it's true, doesn't answer whether President is keeping both the letter and the spirit of his promises. Is he? By the letter test, yes. By the spirit test, well, that's more than debatable. Meeting lobbyists across the street so you don't have to keep a public record speaks for itself. So does raising millions from people who are clearly involved in lobbying. Again, nothing wrong. What it is, though, is business as usual, Washington style, a loophole to every rule. Truth is, while it was perhaps a naive promise to make, we were promised it would be different.